So today I'm going to be going over some diagnosis of automatic transmissions. Um, these diagnostic um, procedures will apply both to regular automatic transmissions you find in medium heavy trucks, um, even automobiles, as well as power shift transmissions and heavy equipment. The reason these um, diagnostic concepts are um, across the board between automotive, medium heavy truck, and heavy equipment power shift transmissions is they all have um, quite a bit in common. Um, that being the hydraulic control and the wet clutch um, application system. And we also have a valve body or spool valves that control the clutch packs that that uh, control the shifts in an automatic transmission. Um, furthermore, we, we move into electronic control of the spool valves or of the valve body. So uh, when I say diagnostics, um, of course we're talking about when we have a problem um, with the transmission how do we go about figuring out the cause? Is it electronic control? Is it a hydraulic problem? Or is it simply a clutch problem? Um, and of course, when we're talking about diagnosing an automatic transmission, any book you come across will, will uh, point you towards the engine or the power plant side of things before moving on with transmission diagnosis. So they want you to look at your power delivery. If the engine is not uh, in proper working order, well the transmission could um, have a, the transmission could have um, a symptom that makes you believe there's a problem with transmission. Um, the reason they go towards the engine side first, if the transmission doesn't have proper torque input from the engine, the transmission is not going to act correctly. So we first need to make sure that the engine is in proper working order, whether it be uh, through trouble codes or uh, a combination of trouble codes and um, live data with a scan tool or just using knowledge of the engine to ensure that the engine is doing its job before we tackle the transmission. So um, obviously the, the engine side of things is going to be um, covered in um, engine diagnosis. So we're talking about transmissions today. So any scenario we're talking about today is going to be that we have looked at the engine and the engine is doing its job. The engine is in proper working order and the transmission is getting what it needs to do its job. So you can have a variety of problems with an automatic transmission. Uh, you can have shift problems um, as far as late shifts, early shifts. Um, you can have slippage um, you can have hard shifts or soft shifts. So there's a, there's a whole big um, list of symptoms that can come from an automatic transmission. And that's uh, due to the complexity. So we're going to break down this diagnosis into three um, subcategories. One being hydraulic um, problems. Two, electronic problems or three mechanical problems. So to start off, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, look at hydraulic problems. The reason we're going to start off with hydraulic problems be, is because hydraulic problems um, could also be caused by electronic problems. But hydraulic problems can also occur because of a problem with the actual hydraulic circuit. So what can go wrong with a hydraulic circuit? Well, we have a pump that provides the fluid flow and pressure 
to activate clutch packs. And we also have the control of the hydraulic pressure through spool valves. So we could have a hydraulic leak, we could have stuck valves, um, we could have debris in the hydraulic circuit, in the fluid. Um, we could have a pressure problem uh, at the pump or in a control valve for the fluid pressure. So we'll start off with leaks. Uh, why leaks? Well, um, leaks are a common problem. So what will happen if we have a hydraulic leak? Well, that kind of depends on where the hydraulic leak is. And we can kind of um, really quickly figure out where we're going to be looking for a hydraulic leak uh, in the overall circuit uh, by the symptom. So if I have a slippage of, let's say, first gear, well, we go to a, a chart, an application chart um, for first gear for whatever transmission we're working on. So just for simplicity's sake, we can just say clutch one or C1 is responsible for first gear. Commonly, we have more than just one clutch pack um, that would be involved with applying a gear. But just for simplicity, we're going to say that we only have one clutch pack involved with first gear. So if we look at C1, where we have a slippage of, of first gear. So uh, how can hydraulic problems cause a slippage of a gear? Well, if we go back to um, how the clutch pack is engaged, um, we can start kind of putting it together as to how um, gear slippage can be caused by a hydraulic problem. So in that C1 clutch, it's actuated by a hydraulic piston. With that hydraulic piston, we have a seal that goes around that hydraulic piston that seals it to the cylinder that that piston lives in. If we have a leak at that seal, we can have two things going on. We can have a piston applying the clutch pack with uneven pressure. If we have our hydraulic piston with a leak, of course we have our shaft going through the center here and our clutch pack will be stacked on this. But we also have our, we have our piston, we have, and then we also have the cylinder that that piston lives in. So we have seals around the outside diameter of that piston, and we also have a seal on the inner diameter of that piston. And the cylinder that that piston lives in will have a cylinder wall on the outside diameter and on this inside diameter. So the seal will be stopping fluid from escaping through the space between the cylinder and the piston on the inside and the piston and cylinder on the outside. So if we have a leak in one place on this piston, let's say we have a leak there. Two things are going to happen. We're going to lose clamping force or force applied to that clutch pack and we're going to have a, an uneven pressure on that clutch pack. So because the leak is on this side, we're going to have less clamping force on the clutch pack on this side of the piston because we're, we're leaving fluid pressure on that side. So if we were to look at a side view of that piston with the leak, when hydraulic pressure is applied to that piston, 
it's not going to evenly apply. If we have a leak on this side of the piston, we're going to have the piston apply unevenly. So when that happens, we're losing clamping force. Well, that's where our slip is going to come in. Slip being when the accelerator is applied, the engine will rev without a noticeable difference in a applied power to the wheels. Another um, problem we will see from a leak at the piston is debris in the fluid because with less clamping force we are slipping the frictions and steels of that clutch pack. When that happens it, it shaves away that friction material from the friction plates. So that friction material will contaminate the fluid. That causes a whole nother um, list of symptoms. This particular piston fits in this housing which would be the cylinder for the piston and if we look closely you can see the machine surfaces that the outside seal for the piston rides on and then we have an inside surface that the inside seal rides on. So not only can we have damage to the uh, piston seal itself, if you have any damage to this machine surface, uh, any scratches or gouges um, caused by debris in the system, you could bypass fluid and have a slippage. Alright, like I was talking about, here is a example of a uh, hydraulic piston that would apply a clutch pack. And we have an outside uh, seal and an inside seal. And if you notice, it is a lip seal, so it has to face the right direction when it goes in. But we can get a leak around either one of these seals that's going to cause a slippage of a clutch. If we look really close in the, the cylinder here, we can see the port that feeds fluid pressure behind the piston right there at the end of the scribe here. And we have fluid ports evenly spaced around the cylinder to evenly distribute fluid pressure. If we, for some reason, have one of these ports clogged up, we can have a imbalanced piston or, um, or imbalanced pressure applied to the piston and ultimately slip the clutch. So where do we get the fluid pressure to these ports for, the, for this uh, piston? Well, if we look on the inside of this housing where the shaft passes through, uh, this would be the input shaft in this, in this case, you can see ports around the inside diameter of the housing, evenly spaced, well, we can't see that one, evenly spaced around the, the cylinder. And there, and down there and that comes through on the shaft and we've got our fluid ports on the shaft and that is what feeds fluid pressure from the pump ultimately to the piston and cylinder so going back to our first gear slippage we were talking about earlier if this was the piston that is applied for first gear C1 clutch once we've established that we do have a slippage and it's first gear and we've looked at an application chart to find out which clutch pack and which piston is responsible for first gear once we pull the transmission 
and get it on the bench for teardown. We're going to be going and looking for that C1 clutch and C1 um, piston. And we're going to pull it apart. And the, what we're going to be looking for is that surface in the in the cylinder and the seals on the piston. So we want to look at these seals. If we look closely, you can see it's a lip seal. The lips facing up in this case but you're gonna look all the way around the the seal any damage whatsoever will cause a loss of fluid pressure and a slippage of a gear and I'm looking at this one and not only do you want to look at it all the way around but you want to run your finger around it and feel for any any damage any inconsistency you want to look at the lip seal itself and make sure it's kind of got the same pressure all the way around there's not a weak spot on the lip of the seal and you just want to make sure it's uniform all the way around 